So in this video, we can start looking at how we can uh, start dividing up the top of the surface so we can start putting roadways and paths. And we're also going to start changing the elevation uh, and we could possibly put in a pond or a swale over here somewhere. So first thing I'm going to do is go into level zero and I'm going to click on the side of the, the uh, topo solid. And in the top right hand corner here, we've got this subdivide. Uh, click on that and we've got our drawing palette up again. I'm just going to choose the rectangle and I'm going to come in from the wall ever so slightly and then think about where I want my path to be. Again, you can use the drawing palette to uh, create loads of different shapes and curves and the rest of it. I'm just going to keep it simple for the purposes of this. Once I've done that, I can go into the material, into the properties box, change it by category. Into here, I'm going to put, I don't know, some tarmac, see what comes up. Should be some asphalt, there it is. So we're just going to use that for the purpose of this, but you can, you can go through and, and see what more you want. And when I green tick, and go into 3D, you'll see it sitting there, and you can see it sitting up. This is a Revit default, so just click on the subregion, and then you've got this subdivide height on the left-hand side here in the properties box. Uh, has to be a positive figure. We can't have a negative figure, which is a real shame. Um, that can be quite useful for roads and curbs and stuff, but we can't do that. Um, I'm hoping that's going to change in the future. Um, so now we've got our drive or a pathway leading up to our, our garage door, but you can see we've got this uh, step up, which doesn't work. So we've got to try and raise our topography up going into it. And uh, the way we do that, I'm going to go into level zero. Again, click on the side of the topography, and then we've got this mod modify sub-elements button. We click on there, and then we can start adding points. Then when we add points on the right-hand side here, we can we can look at how high things are going to be. So we can change things along the surface by checking this one here. So as I add or create points along here, it'll just measure it from that existing surface. I actually prefer to use the absolute. And this is the elevation from uh, the elevation base, in which this case is set at the project base point, where you can do it to current level or a survey point or wherever you want. I'm going to keep it on project base. So I need to put some zeros in to start off with. Uh, and that's um, the reason for that is because I, when we want this uh, raised over here, I only want it. I want it nice and flat from this point here, coming across and keeping it flat. And then I want it to start raising from that point, and I'll probably do the same over this side over here. So I've got those two outer points. And then into here, I'm actually going to put in 150 because we know that the underside of the garage door is 150 mil above this base point. So elevation of 150. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to do it around about here somewhere. So let's add a few more points there. And then escape key twice. And if I go into 3D, I can now see that I've got this path, tarmac path, and it comes up gradually. And then you can see we was zero to this point here and zero. To, so it's nice and flat around the edge to this point here where I put the zeros in. And then it starts gradually rising up to this point here where I put these other points in. And, and the same at this point here. So we've got it now sitting flush to the underside of the garage door. So that makes it a bit easier. Um, next thing we're going to do, uh, ignore this uh, primary contour line, this dark black line around here for the moment. We'll get rid of that in a minute. Um, so over here, I'm going to put in like a pond or a swale or some sort. And to do that, I'm going to do it exactly the same way. So I'm going to go into level zero. Uh, I'm going to click on the outside of the... Uh, Topo surface, uh, topo solid, and then modify sub elements, and then go into add points. And again, I'm going to start on absolute, make sure absolute's checked, and then elevation is zero. And I'm going to draw in the boundary of, draw in the boundary of my swale or whatever I want to call it, pond. You can put more points in um, because uh, yours will be more accurate. Now, I'm going to be going down, so I need to be putting in some negative numbers in here. So I'm going to go minus 300 to start off with. Minus 300. And start going around with another layer. And this will be going down. And then I'm going to go minus 600. Put in some more. And then last of all, let's go minus 900. You can do yours at any size you want, obviously. And this just gives me the bottom of it. Like so, escape key twice to come out of that. And then when I go to my 3D, you can now see I've got this indentation uh, going down 
which could be a swale or a pond or just an undulation in the, in the ground itself. Like so. so now if I want to fill that up with water, um, there's a number of different ways I can do it. I can use component and model in place, which you'll see in another video. Uh, a quick and easier way of doing that is to actually put in another topo surface because we've got a water one that we can use. So in massing and site, go into topo solid. Uh, I'll actually like to be in level zero for this. Uh, and then in properties box, we've got our water. Uh, down the bottom of our properties box here, we've got our water topo solid. And again, I'm going to edit this. So I'm going to duplicate it. Or I've already done that. Let's duplicate it and call it uh, water. I know uh, 1800 and going to here and we've got water and earth and if I want 1800 I don't really want that to be because that's currently two meters at the moment so I'm going to change that 1500 to uh, good maths Jason 1300 so that now gives me a total of 1800 uh, thickness of, of the water click OK and um, we can use a number of different ways of drawing this I'm just going to use the the circle one uh, start about there and drag it out and it wants to be big enough that it's actually going to cover the indentation and a bit bigger uh, that's the idea uh, just green tick for now you'll get loads and loads of um, problems just ignore all those and then when we go into here we can see we're a bit full up so if I click on this I can now use a height offset let's go minus 150 and see what happens with that probably a bit low so let's go minus 100 it's a bit higher we've got a little bit of water poking through over here so i'm gonna we'll change this in a minute we're gonna put a, a large mound around the back of this we're gonna ignore that bit of water on the back there to start with but you can see the process of doing that now you can see we've got these really annoying lines primary and secondary contour lines to get rid of those we need to use our visibility graphics overrides um, so we can either do that um, over here in our visibility graphics overrides or we can use the keyboard shortcut, which is VV. Then in our model categories, press T, and then come down to where we've got topo solid, just open it up, and then we want to get rid of our primary contours and our secondary contours. Click Apply, click OK, and you can now see that those annoying lines have gone. Uh, so over to back here, I'm going to now actually now raise the, 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 the level of the topography up. So I'm going to click on this, modify sub elements, add points, and this time I'm going to go positive figures. So look, let's start with 300, let's do it in 300 mil increments. And I'm going to start over here somewhere and start coming around like so, and then maybe some 600s. You don't have to do yours in 300 mil increments, it could be anything you want. I've just chosen that as a, an arbitrary figure. And then let's maybe have, let's go for something a bit different to a thousand at the very, at the very top here. And don't forget, I use the absolute height, so it's measuring it from its base point. So everything else is at zero. That stays at that. So uh, escape key twice to come out of that. And then you can start to see uh, we've got this mound out the back and we're, we're bringing things up. Um, and you can play around with that. If you want, really. Uh, so that's how we subdivide our topo solid up and how we can start uh, creating terrain with it as well.